Hello, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over how to set up your Modbus TCP connection where your AWO Cobot is the client. Now, the first step is to establish an Ethernet connection between your controller and the control box. In this case today, I'm just using my local computer. So we have established an Ethernet connection between my local computer and the control box of the robot. Next step is to go into your AWO PE under extensions and device config to configure this TCP connection. So you can give it a name. I named it TCP client, select TCP mode. Um, the slave ID we have set as one here and we'll uh, use this a value very soon. And we set the response time, the IP address. This is the IP address of your slave controller. In this case, again, because I'm using my computer. So we can go ahead and check that. So as you can see here, um, the IP address related to this connection is 192.168.181.171. And the port is default 502, so I'm just going to put 502 here and click Add. So connect Mobile's device failed, that's okay because we haven't set up the slave connection yet. So it, under IO config is where you can configure your IOs. So there are many different types you can uh, create. You can do digital input, digital output, register input, register output. So these are the four ones, four main ones that we'll be uh, talking about. However, there are other ones you can explore as well. So as you can see, digital input is only uh, read only. However, digital output is read and write. Register input is read only and register output is read and write. So let's just say we can create one right now. I'll just create one called read register and we're going to get the register output here and address let's just say let's just say zero um, and we will see where this number is used uh, later on as well click add now let's go ahead and go into slave configuration and you're going to make sure this blinker light here is gray if it is not, if it is green, you're gonna make sure you want you want to turn this off by clicking this button here, uh, which will say end slave, and also make sure this is this enable checkbox is not clicked. So next step is to set up your Modbus slave software. So before uh, we go ahead and use this, let's make sure the connection uh, between your local computer and the control box is established through the Ethernet. To do so, we go into a command prompt and we just try to ping our robot through our laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and ping. So the robot's IP address is this. And as you can see here, um, I'm getting, uh, it's, it's pinging through. So the connection is established. And just to reiterate from previous videos, if you want to check your IP address of the robot, you can go into settings, system, network, and click if config. And you can see here 192.168.181.170. Okay, now, so once we have that, let's go ahead and configure our Modbus slave. So do so, go into connection, click connect. Select Modbus TCP IP as the connection. Enter the IP address of your local computer, which is 192.168.181.171 and the port, which we have set as 502 under device config. And finally, we're using an IPv4 address. Go ahead and click OK. So once it's set up, you can click connect here and you should be able to connect. So connect Modbus device success. OK. So now let's test this connection out. So first go to setup, select so definition. Um, as we mentioned before, in this IO config, we're using register output and register output corresponds to holding register here. So digital input corresponds to input status. Digital output corresponds to coil status. Register input re uh, corresponds to input registers and register output corresponds to holding register. So let's go ahead and select holding register and click OK. As we mentioned before, with this register output or holding register, you can both read and write. 
So let's try to write to the slave first. To do so, go into aisle control, select read register. Let's write, let's just say we want to type three, click send. And in our Modbus slave here, we can see that at address zero, the value has been changed to three. And how come it's at address zero? The reason is that at address zero is when we configured our IO, we selected zero as the address, as the slave address here. However, let's say we want to change this to two. Click modify. Now go into IO control. Let's say we want to send six, send. As you can see here, at address two, the value has been changed to six. So as we mentioned before, it is read and write. So it, can, it is also able to read from the slave. So let's just say now, we can go into IO config, so our IO state, and this is where we can track the state of our IOs. Let's say we want to change this value to nine. As you can see here, this read register analog output has been changed to nine. And you can go ahead and add other um, IOs as well. So let's just say we can add a digital in. So now we're only able to read from uh, the slave here. And then this address, you can either set it as the same address as uh, before or a different address. Um, here, let's just say we want to use a different address. Say we want to click three, add, and now here we want to set up the slave here. We want to use input status because we here we're using digital input as the address type. Okay, so now if we change address three, we can, because now it's only digital input, so it's only digital, so it's either on or off. So if we turn it on, Go IO state, digital in is on. However, if we turn this off, as you can see here, digital in is off now. So there you go. That's the basics of how to set up your Modbus TCP connection between your Oblope, uh robot as the client and your controller.